I'm Barbara Phillip, Master of Wine, and uh, I am currently the only female Master of Wine in Canada, one of 30 in North America. And um, it's always interesting for me to talk about the Master of Wine process because people talk about how rigorous it is, how expensive it is, and I just loved every minute of it. And I think that it's a great thing to do for somebody who's really, really curious about wine. Um, it, really the culmination of the Master of Wine is an exam that you do. It's four days long. You come in in the morning, on the first three mornings, and you taste 12 wines. Typically the first day it's white, second day red, and then the third day can be a mixture of wines. And not only do you have to identify the wines, but you're going to be answering questions like, what is the consumer appeal for this wine? Or what is the quality of this wine in the context of its area of production? So you're writing furiously for two hours and 15 minutes. Then you take a quick break and come back and you write the theory papers. And it's all essay based and it's all really opinion based. So what they want you to do in Master of Wine is use your knowledge to argue a point. For instance, on the first day you talk about usually viticultural and winemaking issues. So they might say, how important is access to irrigation water in the fine vineyards of the world? And you make your decision, you answer that question, and then you support your thesis with facts from all over the world. And they'll mark you, they want to see that you've, you've got old world examples, new world examples, you know, um, large production, small production, and you, they want to see that you've looked at both sides of the question, then come down with an answer. Um, and then the fourth day, you come in, you don't have to do a tasting, but you get a chance to write two papers and they're on current issues in wine. So it might be about global warming, or it might be about the financial crisis, something like this, and you'll write two, two answers on that. And you have to pass all of your essays. Each, you know, you write, you write three a day, you have to pass all of those, plus your tasting. And once you've done that, you cheer, but then it's time to pick a dissertation. And the dissertation topic can be whatever you want. And for mine, I picked Pinot Blanc, or examining Pinot Blanc as a signature grape variety in the Okanagan. Now, uh, how long was the process, and what prompted you to, to pursue this? Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, my background is in the hospitality business, and I've always been curious about wine. And I never even really knew that you could get serious about wine. I mean, when I was young and, and in the restaurant business, but as soon as I learned that there was this designation you could get that was unbelievably hard, I just had to do it, right? And that, you know, people in Canada didn't have it, whatever. I just really wanted to do it. And the more I got involved with it and the more I saw that it forced me to open my mind to all kinds of different styles of wine and, and learn about the chemistry and learn about the business and learn about the farming, I was absolutely hooked. Oh, and the process, how long did it take? Well, um, I took wine courses um, leading up to it for a number of years, but I signed up for the MW in 2004 and finished it in 2007. What makes it so difficult? I hear a lot of people that that uh, they say that they're studying to be a master of wine, and they keep talking to them, and it goes on for years and years and years, and mm -hmm. you, you, you just I'm embarrassed to ask any more about it because they never got it. Right. What right. what is so difficult about it? I think because it's so wide-ranging. You don't need to know everything about wine. I mean, sometimes people will come and they'll ask me some obscure appellation in southern Italy or whatever. I don't know all that. I don't know any. There's lots of stuff I don't know, of course. But you do need to have a really broad, worldwide understanding, as I say, of viticulture, vinification, and business. And oftentimes people are really resistant to learn one of those areas and then the tasting of course. So, um, you know, maybe they work in the trade, maybe they work for a distributor and they know that inside and out. Or maybe they know the way the UK distribution system works or the way the US distribution works, but they don't take the time to learn how it works in Sweden or in China or in all these other places. And you really, you won't pass if you don't have a global understanding. And yet somebody could, could really know a subject they, they believe very well, and then they get frustrated, I think, when they write the exam and don't have success. Now, how are you applying your Master of Wine degree 
to British Columbia? Hmm. That's a great question. How am I applying it? Well, I think really through education, I mean, I probably teach upwards of 200 students a year here, so it's my real pleasure to share any knowledge that I've gained. Now, uh, how are the ways in which you are educating? You mentioned a couple of things, but can you describe again what you're, what right. you're doing? Right. I work for the International Sommelier Guild, so that focuses on people who work in the restaurant trade, which is, of course, my background. And I also teach the Level 4 Diploma of the Wine and Spirit Education Trust. And, and these are people generally who work in the retail trade or in distribution. And uh, there's also some people in there, I think, who have their eye on doing the Master of Wine, so it's good preparation for them. Um, some of your Northwest mentors that have helped you along the way? Absol some of them? Absolutely Bob Betts. Absolutely Howard Soon. Absolutely Richard Cleave in the Okanagan. Scott Fraser. Andre Durbach, the, who I worked for many years in the restaurant business. Peter Burrow, a longtime importer here. And many more, but those, those people come to mind right off the bat. Uh, a long list of people to thank. Now, um, John Schreiner, who really helped me with my dissertation. I worked in restaurants for about 20 years, and about 15 of that was working as a sommelier. So I worked for some big, I worked in a corporate capacity for some restaurants here in Vancouver. I also worked for 40 seat restaurants. And then for the last seven years, I've been teaching. And there was some overlap in there too, but it's, it's mainly education and education staff training and restaurant. What are the what are one or two of the questions that you get asked about the Master of Wine process? I get asked, how much does it cost? A lot. How much per year? How much did it cost? And I don't know, I know it's probably like for my own sanity, but I never really added it up. So it's hard for me to answer that. Um, and uh, I also get asked a lot, well, what will you do with it? What will you do with it? And I guess when I embarked on the process, it wasn't really to do something other than what I was doing because I'm very happy with my career, but it makes it, it just makes it easier to do exactly what I want.